Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Here's Mr. Wiggins. Now, how do you feel, Mr. Wiggins? Oh, better. I feel a little better. Well, we can sit right here. You need some help? No, no, no thank you. It's it's all right. I'll see you later then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, thank you, Sergeant. You bet. You're a nice fellow. Quine? Yeah. How many uh, people do we have to look at? Oh, I think they're 28 or 29. We've had two other cases like yours in the past week. Picked up a couple of guys that might be possibilities, but we haven't been able to get positive ideas. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of a suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. Okay, move it over. Right on over to this side of the stage. Spread out and stand facing the audience. Hands to your sides and keep looking straight ahead. Now when you answer the questions, talk up so the people out there can hear you. It's a long way to the back of the room, so keep your voices up. Okay, number one, William Bushman, robbery. Take your hands out of your pockets. Where do you live, William? 108th in Lincoln. Where are you from? Los Angeles. How long you been in this city? About seven months, I think. January, it was about seven months. Were you arrested with anybody, William? Yeah, a couple of guys. Well, what are their names? Joe. Joe, uh, uh, I don't know his last name. Joe uh, Lucas, number 18. All right, who was the other boy? Call him Twitch, Herman Twitchell. Number 19. Any weapons, William? No. You have a car? No. He was walking. If we had a car, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, number two, Max Sloan, robbery. Where do you live, Max? On the east side. You have an address, haven't you? 411 Orchid, south. Were you alone when you were arrested? I was with the guy I was sticking up. Was anybody arrested with you? No. I was pulling the job. We weren't sticking up each other. <laughs> Any weapons, Max? You think he was giving me his wallet because I was pointing my thumb at him? You want to be funny? We've got all night, Max. You can just stand there and be funny all night. All right, I'm sorry. Were there any weapons? Yeah, 32. Well, nickel plated blue steel what? Blue steel. Not counting the rust. You have a car? No, I have OK. Number three, Stanley Meyer, robbery. No, no, none of those men. Where do you live, Stan? I don't, I don't recognize any of those men. Come on, men. you'll have to speak up, Stan. I said I don't live here. I'm from out of town. Where out of town? Wilmington. Wilmington, Kentucky. Can you people hear him back there? No, no. 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 All right, now look, I told you boys, you're going to have to talk up. I don't want to have to repeat the question, so come on, talk up all the way to the back of the room. Now, where are you from, Stan? Wilmington, Kentucky. Where have you been staying here? The only one place, one place here, Flop House. What Flop House? Oh, just a Flop House. I don't remember. Who remembers a Flop House? Hi. Hi. Mr. 
Mr. Wiggins didn't spot anybody, huh? No. Those two guys that jumped him did it so quick. Oh, this is the third slugging in a week. Somebody better come up with a halfway decent description. Hmm. Those guys aren't stupid. They follow a pretty routine M.O. Dark spots. Pick an old guy like Wiggins, jump him before he knows what's happening. Beat him unconscious and then roll him. How much chance has he got for a decent description? They're liable to kill somebody. They seem to be getting rougher. Yeah. Hey, here's a list of Wiggins' valuables. See that all the pawn shops are covered. Okay. The other two victims didn't have much these guys might want to hark. Wiggins had a gold watch and an old stick pin. Watch had his name and an inscription. I might try to get rid of it. We're in car 13J tonight, huh? Yeah. These boys move around, but they seem to stay pretty much to the east side. We'll have the usual cars and five auxiliaries. Waldo's putting about a dozen plain clothesmen on the streets. Funny if one of our boys got rolled. <laughs> They're not old enough. These guys pick them old so they won't give them much trouble. Nice guys. Yeah, swell. <laughs> Yeah, a little. The corner of the Elm and well, let's pull into Rogers and get a hamburger, huh? Okay. 63, 905 at 1769 East Brighton. Uh, See the man. Order me a hamburger and coffee, will you, Ben? Sure. 73, 480. Be right back. East okay. License 52 Young, 760. No, I don't license need a menu. Five, two, uh, two hamburgers young, and two coffees. Seven, six, two oh. hamburgers and two coffees. Everything on the burgers? Yep. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Attention all units in area H. A two four five slugging at eighty seven West Bullock. All units in area Miss, H. Miss! A two yeah? four five Hold those hamburgers. At 87 West Bullock. What's up? Ambulance slugging is about a block away. Ninety nine. You know, someday, someday I'm gonna finish a whole meal. Klein's already here. Over here. It's a woman. Pretty bad. Hmm. Good gosh. I've done everything I can. Oh, here comes the ambulance. Yeah, this is the fellow that found her. Now, uh, Mr. Hall. Yeah? This is Lieutenant Guthrie. Tell him about it. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I was walking by over on the sidewalk and tossed a cigarette over here and saw her. About then, I spotted this officer in this car, and I yelled. Yeah. Hi, Doc. Oh, oh, another slugging, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she's not dead, but she's close. Hey, get that blanket over her, boys. All right, Doc. Looks like a bad fracture. Really a bad one. Lost a lot of blood. Yeah. You think she'll make it? I don't know. Hey, keep that end up there. Right. Pretty old. Lost a lot of blood. You coming down, Lieutenant? Hey, yeah, we'll be down. She didn't have anything on her. No identifications. They got everything. <laughs> hey, hey. You just found a lying here, Hall? Huh? Uh, yes, sir, that's right. I threw my cigarette over here. Wouldn't have even seen her if I hadn't thrown my cigarette. They probably waited behind this hedge. Grabbed her when she passed, slugged her, and dragged her into the lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a good spot for it. Good and dark. Gee, it, it was a terrible thing. Still can't quite believe it. What are you going to do about it? What do you think? Yeah, that 245 slugging that came in about a half hour ago, who's got her? Uh, the old lady? Yeah. Uh, she's in surgery now. Uh, Dr. Gordon. It's the fourth one this week, isn't it, Lieutenant? Yeah. Okay, you mind if I look at your newspaper, Murph? No, 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 go ahead. The coffee shop's closed, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, do you want some coffee? I could use some. Well, want me to run down the kitchen? No, 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 forget it. It's no trouble. No, no, thanks, Murph. Oh, all right. We'll get some across the street later. All right. Hey, Ben. Yeah? The tennis finals are next weekend. Want to go? We're on duty. Well, they'll be playing the rest of this week. Yeah, I'd like to see that Maureen Conley. That's a pretty girl. The picture's in the last section there someplace. Yeah? Yeah. In the sports section. Yeah, right there. Pretty girl, huh? Yeah. Huh, Ben? Yeah. 
Want to go? Yeah. Here comes Dr. Gordon. Uh, doctor. I'm Guthrie, Doctor, 16th Precinct. Oh, how are you? This is Sergeant Graham. Hello. Hello. How's the old lady? She died. Wasn't much we could do. She was pretty well gone when she came in. Hmm. Come on, walk down with me while I get out of this gown. Oh, sure. I'll see you later, Murph. Yeah, take it easy, Murph. So long. Hey, have you got an identification yet? No, not yet. Fingerprints will help. Did just about everything. Bad fracture. Really bad one. When they're that bad, they don't stand much of a chance. No. She regained consciousness at any time? No. By the looks of the wound, whoever hit her, hit her with something pretty heavy. Blackjack? No. No, something like a pipe, maybe. Really let her have it. Mm. Well, that's the way these boys have been working. We've had three others. But not this band. Mm. Cigarette? No, thanks. Sergeant? Mm. No, uh, no, thanks. Well, it's... Hard to believe anybody would beat up an old woman to hit her that hard. Just doesn't make sense. No, I don't guess it does. These other victims, they have much money on them. Add it all together, about $24. Hi, Ben. Morning, Matt. Anything new? No, just routine stuff. Well, let's grab some coffee then, huh? Okay. Oh, I was just looking for you, Van. Huh? Mort sent us over the fingerprints on that old lady. You got an identification? Yeah, we ran a check through and this is what we came up with. The woman's name is Stokes, Mrs. Rebecca Stokes. Lives at 518 North Oak with her daughter. Asher went over to get the daughter. We'll need a positive identification, so Asher's taking her right down to the morgue. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe you'd like to talk to her first. Yeah, yeah, I would. Let's go. Her daughter's name is Lillian Dunn. She was married. Her husband killed in the war. Morning, Lieutenant. This is Miss Dunn. And this is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Greff. How do you do, Miss Dunn? Hello. Hello. We uh, certainly wish we could eliminate all this, Miss Dunn, but it's necessary. Well, I don't think I can go through with it. I don't think I can do it. Well, it, it's really necessary. She has to be identified by a relative. I just don't think I can. Well, it's your mother. We're sure of that. Sooner or later, you'll have to... Well, sooner or later, you'll want to see her. But not in here. Please, not in here. We have to keep her here until we get a positive identification. Uh, do you have any other family? In Nevada. An aunt and a cousin. Well, if they could get down here... Oh, they haven't seen Mom in years. Your mother's the fourth victim in a week. We've got to stop these men. We'll need some information. All right. Uh, where was your mother going last night? Well, I guess she was coming home. She went to a movie, early one. I guess she was coming home. Mm -hmm. Did she have a purse with her? Uh, any valuables? Yes, she had a purse. Can you remember some of the things she carried in her purse? Yes, I guess I can. It wasn't much. Not much money. Anything to identify her? Some cards and things. Does she have any jewelry? Any rings or a watch? Yes. She had a wedding ring. And an engagement ring. They weren't worth much. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, don't be. I uh, think Miss Dunn better go on home, Asher. Get a description of the two rings and take her home. She'll no. Do no, I'll do it. It's best to get it over with. I'll have to do it sooner or later. Well, look, uh, maybe we can get some close no. friends. No, I want to. It's all right. Okay. Now, look, Miss Dunn, if you don't no. want to... Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, 
All right, Charlie. How many times a day do you say, I heard it on the radio? CBS Radio's famed news department with its nationwide staff, its worldwide network of correspondents, its eight wire services, keeps you up to date and informed throughout the day and night. The CBS Radio newsroom is on duty 24 hours a day. For the latest news, keep in touch with CBS Radio News. Sure, deal him. <laughs> King? Uh-uh. Lovely. Who's winning? <laughs> Who do you think? No, can't use it. No. Uh-uh. No? Uh-uh. Uh... Hmm? Uh-huh. Jim. Oh, look, Quine, do me a favor, will you? Drop dead. Well, you couldn't discard the three. Picked one up. Uh, you owe me 30 cents. Kibbutz yet. Oh, uh, Waldo's got eight auxiliaries tonight, Ben. You and Matt are in 13J again. Mm-hmm. Now, how about the police women? Well, he's got five of them. They'll be in the area from 10 till 2, one car within a block of them at all times. Okay. Well, we got half an hour. You want some dinner? Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Have what? This guy's three. Oh, it had to be the jack. Huh? Yeah, yeah, put well, him on. It couldn't have been any one of the nine other cards. Well, what are you getting so sorry about? Well, yeah, hello, Mr. Cents. Wiggins. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Goes on no, I don't think I don't want you didn't wear. Yeah, I, I couldn't beat them. 897 South Wilton? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll meet you there in about 10 minutes. Right. That was Mr. Wiggins. He spotted his watch in a pawn shop, the watch the hold up men took after they slugged him. There's Mr. Wiggins. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello. Uh, where's the watch? Uh, right over here in, in the window. Uh, there. The gold one. It's open. See the inscription? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go in. Yes? Police. Uh, yes? They want to see a watch you've got in your window. Uh, sure, sure. Hey, which one? Uh... It's that one, me, the gold one. Uh, sure. This one? Is that it, Mr. Wiggins? Yes, yes, that's it. See the inscription? To Dave, love, Alice. My wife, she gave it to me. Hot? Yeah. Remember where you got it? Uh, I, I got a ticket. Yeah, here you are. John Jones, 671 Barrington. <laughs> John Jones. That's a good name. You remember what the man looked like? The man who arced the watch? Uh, no. You remember when he arced it? No. Well, didn't you date the ticket? How long have you had it? Oh, a week, maybe. Well, what's so important about the watch? It belongs to this gentleman, not to the man who arced it. Okay, take it. Ain't worth much. Why, it's solid gold. Solid gold. I got dozens. Now, what's your name? Wagner. George Wagner. Look, I don't know nothing about it. This guy came in, he hot to that, so... Look, Mr. Wagner, it's very important that we get a description of this man. He stole it, huh? Yeah, and he's got a friend. We want them both for murder. Murder? That's right. You think you might know him if he came in again? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't remember. Uh, look, uh, you get one of these lists? Lists? Yeah, one of these. Oh. List of stolen articles like that watch. Oh, wait. Sure, sure, sure. I got one. Were none of these other things in your store? No, no, no. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. You didn't know about the watch. You better check. 
Look, I know I ain't got none of them. You didn't report the watch. You better check. All right. If, if I find something, I'll call you. We'll wait. While I check the whole inventory? Just the tickets on the last week and a half. Okay. We'll take a look at them, too. Yeah, sure. Okay. Look, officer. Yeah? I know the man that hocked that watch, but honest, I didn't know he killed anybody. I didn't know it. What's his name? Uh, Young. Carl Young. He, he's hocked things before. He's been in a couple of times. I know him from the neighborhood. I didn't his think... His name's he... Carl? Yeah, Carl Young. The name in this watch is Dave. Well, he said it belonged to his brother. You know his brother? No, but I know him. I, he seemed like an honest guy. Where does he live? In the neighborhood. I bowl. He's in the bowling alley a lot. I bowled with him last Friday. Look, honest, he's... Does he hang like around a... with another guy? i seen him with another guy sometimes. Big guy. You better come on down to the station, Mr. Wagner. The station? Why? I'm afraid you're in a little trouble. Yeah, I know him. Carl Young. Oh, yes, he hangs out in here a lot. You know where he lives? No. I... What's he done? Uh, does he pal around with anybody? Oh, yeah, he's with one guy quite a bit. He's a fellow named, uh, let me see now, what the heck was that? Name? Kind of a quiet guy, a big guy, kind of John, or Joe. Doggone, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Uh, Joe, Joe, I think. Okay, we'll stick around. You let us know if Carl Young or Joe comes in with oh, you. Sure. says he's got a dozen men checking the neighborhood, Ben. There are four cars in the block. Nobody does anything unless you give the word. Okay. Well, if they both come in, we'll take them. One of them, we'll tail them. Okay. That's 3.30. Yeah. See that guy down there, second alley? Yeah, what about him? He's bowled six strikes. Fair. 150 so far. Uh, you need a few strikes, friend. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Try to pick up that split. Yeah, I will. Oh, oh, Lieutenant. Yeah, what is it? That fella just came in there. Yeah, which one? Uh, that big one there. I said to him, I said, Hello, Joe. He said, Hello. His name must be Joe. Where is he? He's upstairs in the pool hall. Oh, come on. Point him on. Yeah, up here. It's right up this way. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Yeah. How are you? That's him? Yeah. Come on, man. He's out in the street. Hold it. He's getting into a car. All right, come on. There he goes. All right, stay with him. 13J, code 2, suspect proceeding east on Fountain. License number 80, Roger, 1135. Attention all units, code 2, suspect traveling east on Fountain. License number 80, Roger, 1135. He's swinging left. 13J, suspect turning north on Lincoln. All units in area B, code 2, suspect proceeding north on Lincoln. Now don't get too close. He's stopping. Now pull up. 13J, suspect at 3000 block Lincoln. He's getting out then. All right, let's go. Going into that building. Now hold it. Wait a little rest the boys get here. Well, there's Quine now. Yeah. He's in the building, Quine. You better take it around back in the alley. Right. And there's Asher. Mm-hmm. Quine's taking the back, Asher. We'll go in. You wait here for the rest. Spread them out. Right, Lieutenant. All right, let's go, man. Okay. How do we do it? When we find out what apartment he went in, clear out the building and take him. Wait a minute. Huh? Mailboxes. Oh, yeah. Lipsky, Busher, Whiting. C. Young, 208. Uh, 
Well, if they're in the room, we can just clear out the rooms on both sides. Forget the rest of the building. I'll take 206. I'll take 210. I tell you, Carl, uh, <clears throat> I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. This game ain't the dumbest in the world, but it'll be a push over. Ben! Yeah? That was Carl Young with the big boy. Now, come on. It's better that way. We'll take him on the straight. They're climbing into a car. Hold it, Young! Now look out, Carl! Let's go! Watch it, Ben! Asher! Over that way! Get them between us! Give it up, Young! Watch it! They're breaking for the alley, Ben! Young's down! Take this one, Asher! Right, Lieutenant! That fine's tackle him! Uh. Yeah. You all right, Quine? Yeah. Yeah. Big boy wasn't as tough as he looked. Ah. Oh. Oh, he's been fighting old ladies too long. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen next Wednesday when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. The lineup starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Ray Hartman, Bob Sweeney, Howard McNear, Peter Leeds, Virginia Gregg, Sidney Miller, and Bill Boucher. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The top fights of the nation come to you on CBS Radio. Just a little later tonight, get the gang together and sit in on the Jimmy McAllister, Baby Ortiz, lightweight battle from Baltimore. The broadcast will be heard on most of these same CBS radio stations. Who are you pulling for? And just as a reminder of where to find the ringside... CBS, CBS, the star's address, the star's address, where you always hear the best at CBS, CBS, the star's address, the star's address, CBS... Stay tuned for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. Dan Coverly speaking. And remember, mystery fans can't miss when it's the FBI in Peace and War, Thursdays on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>